All right then, so now we know a little bit more about service workers, let's create a service worker and also register it in the browser. So first of all, let's create the service worker file. Now I'm going to create this in the root of this project directory so that it has the overall scope. It has access to all of these different files, folders, pages, etc. So let me create a new file and I'm going to call this SW for service worker dot js now i'm not going to write anything inside that file just yet what i am going to do though is register this service worker in the browser from another javascript file so which javascript file should i do this from well if we open up js we have materialized so not in there and we have this ui.js file now this is just for the ui of the application so dom interaction and stuff like that so i don't really want to put it in there either what i'm going to do instead is create a new file called app .js and register it from here. So I need to link to this file from index.html. I'll do that right at the bottom over here. So let me come down to the bottom and just above this script, I'm going to do a new script and the source is going to be equal to forward slash JS forward slash app.js. Now you need to link to this from every HTML page we have inside the project. So inside pages, we have the about page. So at the bottom down here, we need this as well. And we also need to put this inside contact.html as well. So no matter which page we load, that it's gonna register this service worker. Okay, so inside app, this is where we want to register the service worker. So first of all, we need to check if the browser actually supports service workers because not every browser does, only good modern browsers. So if we go to can I use and look at service workers, we can see a lot of these browsers do support them, but the ones in red, i.e. 11, and these ones here, these do not support service workers. So we need to check that that exists, service workers, in the browser before we use it. Now, the way we do this is by doing just a simple if check. And in here, we're going to say if service worker, in quotes, is in navigator. Can I spell this right? Probably not. Navigator. Okay, so what navigator is, is an object in JavaScript that represents the browser and information about it. And we're checking to see if this service worker property exists on this navigator object. If it does, it means that the browser supports service workers and we can use it. So we're only gonna execute this code if it supports service workers, right? So then how do we then use this to register a service worker? Well, we say navigator again, and then dot service worker. Then we're gonna use a method on this property called register. This is how we register a service worker. And in here, we need to pass an argument, which is a path to the service worker. That is just forward slash sw.js. It's in the root of the project. So it's going to get this file and register it as a service worker. Now, this thing right here is an asynchronous task, meaning it takes some time to complete and it returns to us a promise, which means we can tack on a dot then method. So inside this dot then method, we pass a callback function which is going to execute when the promise resolves. So I'm going to do this function as an arrow function, and then I'm just going to say console.log, and we'll say service worker registered. Okay, so we can also tack on a dot catch method to catch any errors, and inside here we'll pass a callback function, which will fire if the promise is rejected, and we'll just say in here console.log, and we'll say service worker not registered. Okay, so this right here, this is promise syntax. It's a way to deal with asynchronous tasks. And this statement at the top, because it's asynchronous and takes some time to do, it returns to us a promise, which is a special value in JavaScript. And that promise says that at some point, this task of registering a service worker is either going to finish successfully or unsuccessfully. And this is known as the promise being either resolved if it's successful or rejected if it's not successful. Now, if the promise is resolved, i.e. it's successful, then it fires the callback function inside the then method when it's done. If it's not successful and the promise is rejected, then it fires 
this callback function inside the catch method. This catches any errors, okay? So this is known as promise syntax. If you wanna learn more about it, feel free to check out my asynchronous JavaScript course. I'll leave the link down below. But anyway, we have this in place now. Now this callback function right here, if the promise is resolved and it's successful, it takes in an object as a parameter. And this is a registration object. It represents the registration of our service worker. And this one takes in a parameter, which is the error, if we catch any kind of error. And this was not successful. Okay, so we're registering now this service worker, and then we're doing this if it's successful, and we're doing this if it's not. And in fact, we'll also log out next to these little statements, the registration object and the error object if there was an error. So now if I save this, what's gonna happen? Well, it's gonna run this code because it's linked to our different HTML files. It's gonna check if service worker exists in Navigator, which it does in Chrome, then it's gonna register this service worker right here. When it's done, if it's successful, we're gonna log this out to the console and we're gonna log out the registration object as well. So let's save this and give this a whirl, save it and come over to our project. Then I wanna to go to console because this is where we're logging out some kind of result and I'm gonna hard refresh. Now it says at the minute this site can't be reached, so let me go back to my HTML file, right click and open with live server, just in case that live server stopped and go back over here. Okay, so now if we inspect again, go to the console, we can see now that the service worker was registered. Okay, and we can see this service worker registration object right here. Now if we expand this, we can see a property called the scope. And right here, it says this is the scope and that is the root of our domain, it's this up here. So it's saying it basically has global scope within our project, it's at the root directory. Now if I moved this service worker right here instead into a subdirectory, so let's say I move it into the JS folder, then I need to go to app.js and change where this is registering to because now it's inside the JS folder. So forward slash JS, forward slash service worker .js. If I save this now, and come back over here, we can see again, the service worker is still registered right here. But if we open this up, we can come down here and we can see the scope is now this thing right here in the subdirectory forward slash JS. So now it would only be able to control files inside this folder. Okay, so that's the scope in action. Now what I'm gonna do is move this service worker back to the root of the project so that it can access everything. Now, if we go back over to the browser, we can come up here and see this application tab right here. Now, if you open this, we're gonna see, if you click on service workers over here, the service workers that we have registered. And we can see this one right here, sw.js. And we can see that it's activated and it's running. So that service worker now has been registered in the browser. It's also been activated and now it's running. Now we'll be coming back to this tab up here, application quite a lot as we go throughout the rest of this course to use some of the different features over here. Now, one more thing to note, service workers only work on pages where they're served over a secure HTTPS connection. Now, localhost that we have up here is not HTTPS, but that is an exception to the rule. And it's an exception so that we can easily develop apps using service workers. But this is important when it comes to deploying your application. Now, the logic behind this is that service workers are very powerful. They can intercept requests made by the browser, so they need to be secure. But now we've registered this service worker, let's look in the next video at the install event.